The thing I hear a lot is, LA sucks for riding. But the truth is, is that after digging in quite a bit, I found out that LA might not actually stink for riding that much because Saxo Bank, uh, currently Garrett Thomas, we've even heard Peter Sagan, back in the day Lance Armstrong, have all called this place home to preseason training camps. So I put together, with some help from a lot of friends, a perfect day out here in California to check out some of the cool amenities, people that put this place on the map, the community that speaks here, and well, I definitely didn't cover everyone, but I think I did a pretty good job at showing off just how cool LA actually is. We arrived in the sunny state of California in the United States to challenge the bad rap that cycling in Los Angeles has seemingly gotten over the years. To get our day started, we made our way up to Silver Lake to learn about one of the shops whose laid back culture have helped shape this very unique community. As we kick off this tour of LA cycling culture and all the cool stuff that is going on here, I stopped in at the Golden Saddle Cycle to meet up with Jimmy, Mick, and Mike. Guys, thank you so much. No problem, <laughs> thanks for coming. Hi. Tell me tell me about Golden Saddle and what you guys do and what you represent here in the community. Uh, well, I guess if I had to describe it in one way, it's kind of a bike shop for everybody. The most important thing to us is providing a space for people to build a community. You know, we have pro cyclists coming here and pro skateboarders and hard chillers, but you know, <laughs> they're all, they all come here. So, I mean, we just like to have, to have fun and ride bike. And when you guys are, are looking to go out for like your favorite day of riding or something like that, this is a good area to start from, which is what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be heading over to this West Ridge Loop. Yeah, it seems like you let people be themselves, right? Like there's not this, uh, there's not this like footprint, like you have to show up in spandex with a helmet with like this very specific thing that's kind of been ingrained in European cycling culture forever. You guys yeah. sort of have, as you look around the shop, you've got uh, famous rappers <laughs> printed up on jerseys. You've got all types of cool retro things that are here that kind of embody your style and vibe that you're putting out. Free spirited, like you come be yourself. Yeah, yeah, come as you are. We also just so happen to have an anti-doping sign that we got from uh, Tour of California. And uh, one of my, uh, my co-workers, David, uh, <laughs> had the, the mind uh, to, to go ask Floyd for a signature. And so we now have uh, his signature up here. This was Bruce Gordon's skin suit. Uh, Jimmy saw a photo of him wearing it with a bright pink bike. Uh, as a young man in his office, so yeah. obviously they don't really make them like this anymore. I'm sure the, the chamois is just a, a chunk of terry cloth or something like that. <laughs> uh, and the best part is what it's hanging on uh, is a titanium hanger that uh, he says King Cage made uh, in Colorado probably. So titanium hanger on a Bruce Gordon skin suit. One of my favorites in the show. For people that don't know who Bruce Gordon is, can you maybe Tell us like who he was in, in a minute. <laughs> um, a lot of the stuff that people are riding today was was pioneered by by that crew and, and that man. And uh, you know, big tire road bikes is something he's always done, and I think really kind of really did something that wasn't happening with cycling at the time. Yeah. So a hey, uh, very forward thinking, and probably a lot of the culture that we're seeing today started from. I happen to see a favorite while we were here at Golden Saddle as well. Let's just see what's up here in the corner. Oh, oh, the Jeremy Powers Rafa Focus National Champion 2012 Edition trading card. Gabby Day, my teammate at the time, Zach McDonald. <laughs> you can see them at Golden Saddle if you come through as well. We just left Golden Saddle and we're making our way on Griffith Park Boulevard up to Griffith Park, which is one of the iconic places that every LA cyclist rides at. It's one of the places that's not closed off the cars, but very low traffic, really beautiful roads, tons of nice pavement, and uh, quite a few miles of good riding in there, pretty much uninterrupted. So we're gonna get up there and check it out, see some of the nice stuff that Griffith Park has to offer. So we made it over to Griffith Park. It's our first stop and it is so, so cool out here. 
Apparently there's over an hour and a half of riding just inside this park, right outside of LA, is our first stop. We're not gonna go through the whole thing or up to the observatory, but apparently the lookout hits the Hollywood sign. And for locals in this area, it is a huge deal because, well, think about it, you're in Los Angeles, but you can literally go park over here at the park, go do an hour and a half of riding, shoot, you can do the thing twice and get three hours of riding in. It's nuts. There's so many things going on down in Los Angeles. To be able to have this resource, beautiful trails, hiking, pretty cool. After a zip through Griffith Park, we headed down to Hollywood Boulevard to ride with the stars. on Hollywood Boulevard, which is where all the stars are that you see always in the movies. The Oscars are getting stuff set up right now. There's tons of tourists out here, and we just left Golden Saddle. We went up to Griffith Park, and now we're making our way over to some dirt called the West Ridge, which I'm gonna meet up with some of my friends who are in town training, tell us a little bit more about all that. just got down Sunset Boulevard and made a right onto Mandeville Canyon. Mandeville Canyon is one of the iconic climbs in LA proper. It is uh, over five miles long. Over 8,000 people have ridden it on Strava and put their time up on the board. Currently, Phil Guyman sits there at just around 14 minutes, which is insane, nowhere near that. But it's a huge climb if you're in the area, you've gotta hit Mandeville Canyon. That's not what we're doing. We're actually going up West Ridge where we're gonna link up with some dirt and two riders who have a lot of experience, Payson McElvin and Colin Strickland. And this is gonna take us across all along this ridge, which is gonna bring us over to Peddler's Fork. We can have a delicious coffee, and catch up with those guys. I just rode up Mandeville Canyon. It's one of the iconic road climbs in LA that everybody does, tons of intervals and lots of sweat going down there. Then I met up with these two guys, Payson McElvin, Colin Strickland, two very accomplished gravel racers. We're gonna talk about all the things that you guys have done, but what, tell me what we're doing here. We're riding up West Ridge Road, a beautiful dirt kind of fire road. Um, gains a lot of elevation over the course of 15 or 20 minutes. and gives you some beautiful views along the way. Awesome, well thanks for meeting up with me. I can't wait to check it out, let's do this. Cool. Colin, so tell me man, what is it about California that brings you out this way to do some training? Yeah, I'm out here primarily for the predictably nice weather, as you can see today. Yeah and the just beautiful 30 minute climbs that seem virtually endless when you first arrive and you realize, yeah, well, there's about 15, but you can cut them into a bunch of different pieces and uh, make really solid days out of it. And it's the piece that's missing from my training in Texas. There's this misconception that riding in LA area is really bad, but when we're out here, it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not so bad when you're really out here. I used to be convinced it was really busy. Too much to really enjoy the climbs, but a lot of these back canyons of Malibu are virtually empty because not many people have business up there, and if it's not a direct route, no one no one drives those roads. Yeah. You won DK last year. Um, you won Iceland last year, right? I did, yes. Yeah, so you've got, you've got quite a few big ones under your belt. What do you want to do this year? What's the goal? Man, uh... Have fun, meet more really cool people. <laughs> but I would, uh, it would be really fun to uh, see how Dirty Kanza goes down again because that one is, uh, seems like currently the biggest show. So yeah, the Perry Roubaix of gravel. So yeah, have a have a good run at that one and see if we can uh, see if I can't repeat. Cool. Jason, so you're out here. You kind of made this your base for a couple. Uh, how long have you been here now? Oh boy, three weeks maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I usually spend three months out of my year in California, 
probably most of that is in the Los Angeles area. Yeah, are you one of those guys that we kind of see parked with their van? <laughs> down, we would say down by the river, but down by the <laughs> beach, just chilling, making coffee in the morning and hanging. You know, I brought the van this time because I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between San Francisco some. Okay. But now and then you want to get out of the city and, and spend a few nights in a quieter setting. So having the van to kind of escape for a couple days is nice flexibility. Yeah, what 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 do you love about this that's different than where you typically call home or where you go out? What what makes you love the LA riding? And what I guess and also what have you been a part of in the area? Like what rides have you done? Yeah. Well for one it's 30 degrees on average in Durango this time of year. So that makes it hard. Um, but also Durango is such a small town, tightly knit, and I love it for that reason. But I'm also someone that really appreciates the speed of life of a bigger city. Yeah. I'm really inspired by a lot of the ideas, creative things going on out here. So I'm definitely one of those racers that spends a lot of time thinking about things other than bikes. The training for this, you know, early season style riding can't be beat either. Right. Tons of incredible, perfect, road climbs, uh, surprisingly little traffic once you get off of PCH. The legend has it that uh, you have the KOM on this. <laughs> you know, I did it one time. Uh -huh. uh, haven't checked in a while. You know, I'm in town for two weeks. Take it away, man. <laughs> I, need a, I need a carrot to chase. I don't race until March, so. I'm retired. But <laughs> what, speaking of racing, what races do you have coming up? What do you, what, last year you won what was formerly known as the Land, one, R Land Run 100. Yeah. So what do you got coming up? What are, you, what are you planning for this year? You're getting more heavily into gravel. Yeah, the gravel scene is, is really hard to ignore. Um, I think I'll always stay a mountain biker at heart. My schedule in 2020 is about 60% mountain bike, 40% gravel. But the surge, the gravel surge is just impossible to ignore. And that uh, Land Run 100, now called the Mid-South, <laughs> will be my first race of the year. Mid-March, taking on this hitter. Uh -huh. um, then a few mountain bike races, Belgian waffle, kind of hitting all the all the biggest off-road events. What do you think about riding uh, Leadville 100 on a gravel bike? <laughs> I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> drop bar, drop bar mountain bike could be cool. Okay. Could be cool. My buddy T Brown, Travis Brown, did that one year. Full suspension drop bar setup. Okay. Pioneer. Uh, personally, I still love. Uh, a hardtail or a light dual suspension uh, for that event. Gravel bike would be brave. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, I wish you the best of luck this year. I, I hope to see you at many podiums. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, <laughs> Jeremy. Is this the top? This is the top. That's a nice climb. Yeah, beautiful, gentle. It's awesome. And it's pretty unique. I mean, we're here in LA and there's literally a billion <laughs> very important things going on, at least seemingly, down in this area. Oceans out there, it's absolutely beautiful, but here you could hear a pin drop right now. Well guys, thank you. It was awesome riding with you. I wish you both the, the best. Hope I see you guys at some gravel events. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, awesome to, Thanks, man. Awesome to ride. Hopefully I see you guys out there. I'm going to Peddler's Fork for coffee. Enjoy. Catch you next time. The desolate feeling of descending along the West Ridge was nothing short of amazing. Looking out at one of the biggest cities in the United States without anyone really around to bother you other than hikers and a couple gravel riders and maybe an ambitious dog walker, the roads were impeccable for riding your gravel bike. Crisscrossing with single track trails all around you. It wasn't just beautiful, it was ridiculously fun. With the California sun on our backs and that LA haze in the sky, as we made our way to Peddler's Fork, it was nothing short of perfect. Give us a wave! That was sick, coming down the mountain, just do the single track and go just tearing it up with that afternoon LA sunlight, just beaming in, absolutely stunning. I made it to Peddler's Fork and we're gonna go inside and meet up with the owner, Gideon. This place has got a bike shop, coffee shop, restaurant. Over the years when I did tour California, we used to stop in here and get a coffee, so I have great memories of this. 
I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. It's cappuccino time. Cheers, man. Thank you. <laughs> So I found one of the guys behind this whole operation here, 10 Speed Coffee, Peddler's Fork, Gideon Kleiman. Thanks, thanks for taking a minute. Thank you. Yeah, tell us what's going on in this space because it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so yeah, we've been here for um, going on seven years. Uh, original idea behind it was a uh, beer garden with this sort of you know bike shop in the background and we always wanted a spot to ride and essentially have beer. Um, you need to have coffee before, so we got into the coffee business full on, uh, met the original owner of 10 Speed up in Hood River, Oregon. Uh, the original driving force behind it was, you know, all the cycling amenities. If you don't care about cycling, come hang out. It's a fun theme, fun every now and then to see people coming and going, you know. We do morning rides, we do night rides, and our regular customers, they love it all just the same. It's just a big place to hang out, really, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super welcoming, it's really fun. I'm enjoying this delicious coffee and just taking in everything, and it makes you feel really like you're at home. So we're about to head out here. We're gonna go Sweet. up some, some climb, make our way over to the PCH, but thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you for this beautiful space that you've created for Cycling Crew and what you do for this area in the community. Awesome, thank you so much. After some chit chat about all the cool things that Peddler's Fork had going on, we had to hit the road and beat the setting sun for one last big climb as we made our way over to the Pacific Coast Highway. So we're climbing the last climb of the day. Stunt. I don't know if it's a canyon or a road, I have no idea, but it's a good climb. It's supposed to be about 20 minutes. I've never done this one before. It's really, really pretty and uh, Thank God I got that coffee. three quarters of the way up this climb, Stunt Road, and it is wild, super, super hard. Been uh, digging, but it's beautiful, and we're just about to the top, so yeah, not much more to say other than we gotta get on with it. Even if we weren't in LA, <laughs> this would be pretty. So that's the top of Stunt Road. I'm staring at the Pacific. I'm looking back at these beautiful mountains. Honestly, I could be in Europe. I could be anywhere in the world. This is one of the prettiest places that I've ever checked out. We're gonna fly down here, go down this very steep road, Tuna Canyon, boom, 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 to the PCH, the famous Pacific Coast Highway. We're gonna end down in Santa Monica.
That was a day of it. We started in one part of LA, came all the way across to so much other stuff. This place is awesome. As you can tell, the surfers are finishing up their last sessions of the evening as they tighten things up. The sun's setting. We made it down Tuna Canyon onto the Pacific Coast Highway. We saw a lot of stuff. If you guys have trained in LA or ever been out here, let us know in the comments. Definitely give us a thumbs up. Let us know what area of LA you like riding in the most. There's so many different areas out here. And um, if you guys wanna subscribe to GCN, click right in the center. Check out other cool content over here. You know the drill.